welcome back to part two of read the title of whatever I'm calling this. So I wanted to talk more about about losing friends and waking up each day wondering what happened to to your life? What happened to your and all these people that you always thought they kind of relied on you, but the truth is you relied on them. You relied on them to give you a sense of belonging, to give you a sense of purpose, to bounce, you know, you'd bounce jokes off of each other, to have a good time, to essentially bring about cheer in your life. When they just drop out, when they just they need to start having kids or uh, their jobs become even more important to them than they already were. Well, I can tell you right now, all these people are gone. They're, I mean, like, I, they're like the walking dead on Facebook. And, and I, I don't know, maybe I appear the same way to them. Like, like just ghosts lingering there in the ether. And it makes me really sad. I, I've been really sad for the last 10 years. Really. Uh, th these are not people that can be replaced. These aren't like, oh, well, you meet someone at work and then they're your best friend now. And no, it doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. But, you know, they have shed me and as a result, I have shed them. And there is no there is no going back. There's no going back. I'd be lucky if I talked to them once a year <laughs> at this point. Maybe twice a year. But they might as well be dead to me and I to them. And it makes me terribly sad. But maybe all those movies had lied to me. Maybe, maybe life really is about the grind. Life really is about changing dirty diapers and paying bills, saving up for your own funeral expenses. It's a rather nihilistic way of thinking, I know. And something that's really almost impossible for me to to cope with. I can't I can't change myself to thinking about those kind of things as a priority very easily. It's like I'm. It's like I'm. I've been in a prolonged state of sleep, uh, a long dream, waiting for those great friends from the days of yore to, to come back. But I know they won't. I know that's just a fantasy. I know. I know that we're all truly alone. And perhaps that's best because we have to come to grips with our mortality. We have to come to grips with our reasons for being. And for me, I suppose they take, I take solace in the fact that one day I'll be able to run away and go to this secret place I have. As an expat, drinking beers and looking out at, staring absently at the sea, I was reading some travel guide and talked about how expats, especially from the U.S. and Europe, they, they're always looking out at sea. I wonder what they're looking for. In a way, I already know because I look for it each day. Let 
looking for purpose, looking for reason, trying to find all of these things amid the chaos. But it's best to do alone because for so many years I I relied on my friends too much. I relied on their presence to justify my not coping with with my own with the aging process, for example. You know, people just don't make friends as easily in their mid thirties. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that anymore. So we have to shed this concept that friendship is the end all be all, and that I still have a trouble dealing with it because. I realize in hindsight, and like I said, I didn't know it at the time, but friends were everything to me, were my life. And without them, all I have is the mirror, the blank wall to stare at, and to question myself. But in a way, I'm thankful because It allows for me to see the reality of the world, the universe, whatever, more clearly. It allows me to understand myself more clearly, my strengths, but especially my weaknesses. A very fragile person, we all are. What are we looking for? What are we hoping for? I don't know if I should talk about this, but I've already covered pretty much what I wanted to say, but... Uh, the singer died last month, beginning of last month, December 2015. I had grown up listening to him sing with his band. Even throughout the 2000s, like we're talking about the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. And the, those voices, they become part, they become etched into your soul. And when they start to flicker out, And all these people that you looked up to, right or wrong, right or wrongly, uh, when they're no longer here, you realize that a big part of your world is dead, a big part of your world is gone forever. You can't expect the kids to be talking about things from your past. You can't expect that to be important to them. In a way, it's like you are the... It's like you're the attendee at a funeral that just goes on and on. And I don't mean to be grim and really brooding here, but... That's that's what I come to grips with. That's what life is. Like if you remember if you remember things that were important to you then it can be a very solemn experience, very dark and downright depressing experience in some respects, but in other ways you can be thankful. You can 
like, for example, I'm so thankful that I was able to grow up in the time that I did. I don't think I could handle it these days. I think these days I, I really think I'd be a terrible person. It, you know, if I'm not a terrible person already, I think I'd be a much worse person if I grew up as a boy uh, today with all this technology and I think I'd be I'd be much less of a person and I'm really not trying to speak bad about the youth because I think that the youth are you know pretty intelligent these days and pretty savvy and sharp and it makes me feel all the more <laughs> obsolete, but I'm thankful for when I grew up. I'm thankful for those memories. And although I still cling to them too tightly, I'm thankful for it, and I'm happy about it in my own way, in my own grim way. <laughs> we have to find our own, I want to say something cliche, like, oh, we have to find our own happiness. Um, we need to, we need goals to work toward, right? But. For me, it's just that sense that I'll be able to escape with those I love to, to somewhere better, to greener pastures, to where the beer and the laughter and smiles are eternal and never die, and the sun never sets below the horizon, but just always lingers there. You know, making all those beautiful orange and reddish colors. And darker purples and blues up higher in the sky. I suppose that's what I live for. My nihilistic self and I. Thanks for living. I should say, um, I, I don't know if anyone's going to watch this, but uh, thanks for listening, and um, yeah, I'll have some more interesting videos, I think, coming up. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to talk about. This one was a little brooding. <laughs> I don't know if to look that word up, brooding. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but thanks for listening nonetheless, and I uh, hope things are going well. Bye-bye.